Hey guys, it's Kim here with Fairly Fiber Fun. Thanks for joining me on week four of the Fiber Festival prep. Um, if you've been enjoying this little series, please give my video a thumbs up, like, and um, subscribe. <laughs> if you have enjoyed this series so far, please like and subscribe to my channel. And don't forget to hit the notification bell so you don't miss new videos as they come out. If this is your first time at my channel, welcome. I appreciate you stopping in to see what we're all about. The, this series of vlogs um, is not the normal ordeal here, uh, but I am prepping for a my first ever fiber, fiber festival that is located in Sati, Georgia. I will be setting up on Friday, May 19th, and will be vending Saturday and Sunday, the 20th and 21st. So I am undeniably stressed and excited and everything. So I hope you guys enjoy being a part of the behind the scenes craziness that goes into a festival. I have vended before, but never a fiber festival like this. And it is a small one. This is the second year we've ever had it. And it is local, so to me, it's a low pressure, low risk sort of ordeal. And if I can do this this year and hopefully teach next year and vend, then maybe I can do SAF the year after that. I need at least one of my kids to have a car <laughs> so I can do that. But we will cross that bridge when we get to it, and I'm not going to worry about it right now. So this is the Sati Fiber Festival prep. This is the final week. We are in week four. There are four days um, until the festival begins and or I have to set up rather. So um, Thursday, I'm hoping to be done with everything. And Friday, I may have some last minute things that I decide to do um, that if I won't do if I don't have time for, you know. So um, I have to finish carding the gray bats that I carded twice, so they need one more pass through the drum carter. My black locks need three passes through the drum carter, and I'm not flicking locks this week at all. That's it. Whatever I get out of these two bags of flicked locks is however many bats that I get. It's I don't have time to be working on that. It's time to get everything else done. I also have a list that is a mile long that I need to accomplish this week, and nothing on that list can be sacrificed so I've got to get to it. And today I have been procrastinating because I'm recovering from the tragic headache from yesterday on Mother's Day. So, which if you watched the last episode, you will have heard all about that. So let's get right into it, shall we? And I will see you on the other side. So the only thing I had left to do with the gray bats was to um, weigh them into one ounce sections. And then I put each one ounce section I put two together in each bat so that each bat would be exactly two ounces. And um, this is not something I do when I'm just carding for my own use, but for selling, I wanted each of the bats to be the exact same weight. Um, and I was kind of sad at how very consistent the color was, like a solid color, because when I first carded these the very first time, it was so striped and beautiful and gorgeous. But this color did turn out absolutely amazing. So, <clears throat> everybody loved it. It's kind of a fawny color, um, little gray and brown mixed together because there, some burnt tips did turn it more of a brown color. I could have removed those, but I didn't. So, here is the final bat. Isn't that just gorgeous? It's so pretty. Immediately, I took these into the room and I packaged them up. I had printed all the labels and everything ahead of time, and I ended up not having the right number of labels. I had made, I think, 12 labels. I thought I had made 14. I ended up with 18 bats from the gray. So I had 14 of the white, 18 of the gray, and then here in a little bit, um, in just a moment, I'll be carding the black. I ended up with nine black bats, and I still have a 1.3 pounds of black wool to flick and then card and then that entire last year shearing will be done uh, prepping for spinning so I can't believe how much I got done in just like a month and a half two months um it's crazy 
But anyway, all those bats look so pretty in the display too. And uh, I did get them all packed in that one box. It, it's amazing how much fabric you can put in one box. So here's the, the first round of carding on the black. And that's the only, the only round of carding that I filmed. Um, because I got tired of working the camera and I just wanted to get the work done. I was, I was tired of carding. I was tired of filming and um, I just wanted, like I said, I just wanted to get this done. But I did want to show you guys how the first bat turned out and it turned out the rich like chocolatey color because like once again the sunburnt tips make the black wool look brown. Um, I'm calling it black, but it is definitely brown. <laughs> and then here we have the booth set up. We skipped ahead a few days, and um, this is actually day two. So this is what was left after Saturday. So several things have already been sold, and uh, we did rearrange the display a bit. But I thought I would give you guys a little video tour of my booth. And um, I've silenced it because it was just random little noises as people were getting set up Sunday morning. Um, immediately after this, we had a little dance party. Uh, so that was fun. Everybody had trouble waking up someday. And Yitka, one of the other vendors, kept throwing um, felted sheet and dryer balls at me throughout the day. So we had fun throwing felted things at each other. Uh, she was so much fun. You'll hear more about her in a bit. But anyways, this is my booth and I am super happy with these wire shelves. I did not get them painted. That's okay. They ended up being just fine the way they are. Hey guys, this is Tuesday after the festival and I wanted to say that I had the most fun. I made so many friends. I had a lady custom order matching mushrooms for her twin daughters that I need to pop in the mail today. Um, did several trades with other vendors, got contact info from other vendors, found some vendors that are fairly local to me. We can actually get together and they've got little kids while mine are mostly, you know, they're teenagers and almost grown. So, um... It's been a while since I've had little ones running around in my house, so I don't mind if um, they bring their children to my house. So um, I just met so many amazing people and the vendor right next to me was the heart of the party. Like, uh, he was he was just awesome. His name was Bobby and he's um, Planted Acorn. I highly recommend you give him a follow. He does a lot of felting and he makes beads. He does so much stuff. And he, um, he goes around in a squirrel costume and plays with kids. He tells stories. He has his felted squirrels do um, stop motion animation with them. He tells stories with them. It's super cute. He's mostly on Instagram, but I think he just started on YouTube a little bit, maybe. Um, so he's starting to branch out. He's writing books. He was so much fun. I met a lady from Florida. Her name is Vanessa. You may know her as the Spinner's Stash. We did a fiber trade and she spun up um, some of my fiber, one of my Hocus Pocus bats, and turned out into gorgeous yarn. She used to drop spindle for most of her spinning while we were there, but she did use her wheel for this one. And it was just amazing. She's awesome. I adore her. Her energy was great. Everybody's energy was fabulous. I talked and laughed so much this weekend that I am struggling to get my voice back. <laughs> my throat has been sore, like, and I've been exhausted, but it was so good. Um, we had this, this teacher, retired teacher, come into our booth, and she gave us the hardest time, and then she came back and she bought some stuff. <laughs> oh, it was so much fun. My friend Dana was with us, and um, on both days, my daughter... Joy, she went with me on Sunday. So I had an extra pair of hands to help load up the car, which was fabulous. And she had a lot of fun. Um, Nicole from Spirit Fiber Works took her llama named Hope. I did not get any pictures of her, but 
She took Hope through to meet all the vendors and Hope was giving everybody kisses. And on Sunday, that was Saturday. And then on Sunday, my daughter spent a lot of time at the animal pen and Hope just wouldn't leave her alone. Hope really liked her. So <laughs> that was super duper sweet. Um, and made my daughter's day because, you know, llamas can be very, very picky and very moody and um, they like to spit. Although this one is so sweet. She gives everybody kisses. She'll give you hugs. Um, she didn't spit on anybody as far as I'm aware. I, uh, I didn't sell anywhere near as much as I had hoped to, especially the Jacob. I did rearrange, um, at the end of Saturday, we kind of rearranged the display a bit and that helped. I sold some Jacob on Sunday, although not a whole lot, but it was still some. I sold enough stuff to be down, um, one and a half bins, which was fantastic. And um, I was able to put all of my traded and purchased goods in one of those bins to take up space, you know. Um, I met a lady who is in charge of four different farms and a whole bunch of artists to turn local to her um, alpaca fiber into products that people can purchase. And she's in Murphy, right around Murphy, North Carolina. Um, the woman's name is Woody. I don't know her husband's name right now, but, um, the Two Crows farm. The lady is super nice. She saw my baby socks and she was like, oh, could you do this out of alpaca yarn? So I have now been commissioned to make things out of her al alpaca yarn. She sent me home some yarn, um, and... Um, I get to play with it. So, yeah, these are all the, the colors. Let me see if I can get them. There's two skeins that are not solid color. I'm really looking forward to working with those. And the rest of the skeins are solid. They look sort of natural dyed. I don't know. Um, I don't know if it says on here. But it may be that the fiber was not white, and so that's why it's got this interesting undertones to it. This is the one I'm working on right now. So this was a business connection. Um, so this was a business connection I didn't expect to make, and it's going to be beneficial for a very long time. I had a sock knitting project with me and I took the needles when I was done with the sock and I started working on this yarn right here and it's a lot thicker. This is like a heavy fingering and I'm used to an extremely light fingering for the socks. So where I've been doing, was it, 32 stitches for each sock, um, I wasn't able to get that with this yarn. So I, after coming home, I switched needles and I tried um, using DPNs, which I have, I think they're Knitter's Pride, I'm not sure. Here's the case. On every, every size needle is a different color. So I'm using the one and US one and 1.5, I believe. Yeah. So these two sizes to make these little things and it's working super well. I used bigger needles for the hat. So I made a newborn hat and I made these socks using 28 stitches. So I had to use DPNs to get the two by two rib before, yeah, to work out where I would always start with knit two and end with purl two on every needle. And that worked better than trying to do magic loop or the flyers, which are the same thing as magic loop because you have half the stitches on one needle, half the stitches on the other, and then a third needle that you're working with. And it just wasn't working for the ribbing. So I adjusted my pattern and wrote it down for this size. Now this is like six months, three to six months. Then I made, I went down to 24 stitches and I made newborn sock size. So now I'm working on mitts. 
and this is what they look like so far. I started with 24 stitches and went up to 28. And that might be too big. I don't know. So um, that will be a set, the hat, the sock, and the mitt. Of course, two socks, two mitts. That will all be a set. And um, they're, they're going to send me some lace weight leftovers from other projects that one of the other makers has. Um, so that's super exciting. That's going to be an ongoing project with them where they send me yarn, I send them finished product, and they pay me. So I'm really, really excited about that. And I have loads of yarn to work with. Of course, if I get tired of any of it, I can send it back and be like, hey, get me something different. Um, so I get to play with colors and stuff like that. Um, yarn in time, not yarn in time. I'm trying to remember her name. Okay, I, I had to stop the video and look her up. She's Garden Garden of Eden Yarn and Fiber. She makes these little, I'm going to take these out. She makes these little magnetic dishes. So they've got, this one has a broken magnet on it, but it still works. It's inside. And she had stitch markers on here, but for some reason mine, they look metal, but they're not grabbing the magnet at all. Um, but I have my yarn needle in here. And it's got a lip on it, so it'll hold the other stitch markers. So, I love this. This is one of my first purchases. And it ended up turning into an exchange. I paid her for this, and she came to my booth and bought something for me. So, it worked out. Um, another purchase, well, not a purchase, another trade was Fiber for Fiber. So, Vanessa of the Spinner Stash got Fiber from me, and I got this. Polworth Yak Blend from her. It is the softest thing I have ever touched. And um, I can't wait to spin it. I think I'll save the new fibers for Tour de Fleece. I um, purchased, did I do a trade? I think I did a trade. Um, two bats or so for the skein of yarn from Yarn in Time. And her name is Amber, and she has, I think she's done a four-year-old, but don't quote me on that because I might be getting people mixed up. So I got this yarn. It's very rustic. She says she got all the fibers from Saf last year and had them processed locally. So this is really, really awesome to have all this yarn. Not all this yarn, but some of her yarn, it's very rustic. It's a little a little prickly, but not, not terrible. Like I could get used to it being against my neck. It's, it's not bad. Um, so I just wanted to try out her yarn and see what I thought about it because nobody was buying her yarn and that's a crying shame. So this is a blend of Shetland, Icelandic, mohair, nylon. It's only got 5% nylon in it. Um, and it says on here that it was milled in Cleveland. So that is really super cool. And then I had another trade with someone else that wanted um, a 16 ounce bottle of Power Scour. And she uses the local mill to process her own fibers. She kind of trades work for, excuse me, she trades work for um, processing her own fibers. So I have a list of every sheep that these came from. Each color is from a different sheep and they are all 100% thin. So, the Aqua, which is this one, I got four colors. I don't know how much this is. I just told her the same price. So this is from a sheep named Lavender. This one is from a sheep named Dandelion. Um, this is from Salt. And this is Lovey. So all of that in exchange for one bottle of Power Scour, I feel like I made out a lot better. <laughs> I got the better deal on that. There's some veg matter in it, and it's picked up a few little bits and bobs of stuff in just being in the bag and being toted around and things put in and took out and all that stuff. So anyways, oh, and I bought this book from Vanessa. She has published her own book, and I did not know this, but if you purchase a book from Amazon, um, 
the author doesn't get hardly anything for it. So if you purchase from the author, she gets about 50%. So I bought this from her and she signed it for me. So awesome. So she does a lot of drop spindling and she teaches all sorts of different things that you can do with the drop spindle, different ways you can prep fiber, um, different how to set your yarn, set the twist, how to use a nitty knotty, I mean, how to do an Andy and Flying bracelet. There's just so much information in this book and she does all these sorts of different art yarns, how to do different art yarns on your um, drop spindle and twist direction and all these. It's very detailed and in-depth and I haven't read over the whole thing, but I'm really looking forward to diving into that more over Tour de Fleece. And I, speaking of Tour de Fleece, I am running a team on Instagram for Tour de Fleece for anyone who wants to join in. I have not named it. I haven't created the tag for it yet. I will keep you guys posted on that. I don't even know when Tour de Fleece is. I just know that it's coming up really soon. And so um, several of the vendors are like, yeah, we'll join your team. So, oh, I meant to say, Vanessa is another Waffa vendor. So she was wearing her wool and fiber arts shirt, but she was wearing overalls over it. So it kind of covered it up. But she had the tote bag and I had the tote bag and I was wearing the shirt. So that was fun to see another Waffa vendor. Um, yeah, that was great. And I'm really glad I got the t-shirt so that I could, um, what do you call it? Promote Waffa, I guess is what I'm trying to say. I don't know, my brain. Anyway, I've only filmed this twice, so I, and my brain is everywhere and I'm so excited about stuff and it's, this is, this is the overloaded, overstimulated brain here. Um, so anyway, I think I'm going to wrap that up now. It was, oh, this is another thing I traded for. So this necklace is actually felted. Isn't that pretty? So that is all felt. Hey, squishy. Just a little. Um, so that was sweet. That was from, her name is Yitka. I will spell her name in here because it's not spelled the way it's pronounced. All right, so I think that's everything. And um, if you couldn't tell, I had the best time in the world. Every customer that came through was the best. Um, I sold so much stuff, nowhere near what I had hoped to, but way more than I expected to. So very successful weekend. My friend Dana sold uh, more than she expected and actually made a profit, which is fantastic. And she made a lot of other connections as well. So it benefited her too and her business. So yeah, all in all, all that work I put into the festival wasn't 100% necessary. All this dress was definitely not but it was worth it and I'm incredibly, incredibly happy. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed and I will see you on the next one. Bye guys.